What's going on? What's going on, family? So I want to talk about why we like to blame each other for stuff. Let's let's say let's call this the blame game because it's like we never want to examine ourselves as 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 a problem. But let's face it, we are our own, we are our own worst enemies. Even if even if you're in a situation and um, you think you did nothing wrong and maybe the other person was more aggressive, we still play a part in that. We, we, we play a part whether we whether we enable that person to do that, whether we accepted that person to do that, or we just sat back there, you know, and just provoked the person to do that. But we all are tempted by our own desires. You know, men, men cheat on their wives and they blame the fact that their wives are not having sex with them or, or the women are, are blaming their husbands because um, you're, they're never home, they're always working, or you, or you abuse their children because they wet in their pants too many times, or you know, or you or you hate someone because of something they did. But let's be real. Let's be real. You do these things because it's in you. It's a part of you. That's the truth. And so I want to start with Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Um, the man said. Well, God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Verse 12, the man said, the woman you put here, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate it. Adam automatically blamed Eve and he's the man. He's supposed to be the leader of the relationship, but he automatically blamed Eve. Let me tell you something about leadership. A true leader knows that he takes or she takes the blunt of the responsibility for anything that happens because, because we're leaders, because we've been chosen to lead. We, we, we know that there's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, heartache and pain and, and, and selflessness that has to come at our, at our expense. So we have to be selflessness. We have to not easily be provoked we also have to understand that everything we do is done out of love. And so blaming someone is not done out of love. You know, we have to forgive. That's not done out of love. So my point in saying this is that sometimes you got to look in the mirror before you point, point a finger at somebody. Because when you point a finger at somebody else, there's two more pointing, pointing at you. And so why do we do this? Why is it such human nature for us to blame stuff? I've, I've spoken to many people. I've spoken to men and women that always want to blame their ex for something that happened in their relationship. But I encourage you and I challenge you to look at what your part was in that relationship. Because there was your, you did play a part in, in, in harming that relationship. So instead of us blaming each other, why, why not try to understand why we do what we do to each other? And so I'll finish this. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. So God said to the serpent, because you have done this, I will curse you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. Eve passed the buck. But what Eve doesn't understand is she committed that sin because of the natural, her, her natural sinful desire to want to do what she want to do and not listen to what the Lord asked them to do. Although Adam, her, her husband should have been, been the man and stepped up because Adam was there. If Adam would have just spoke up and said, Eve, no, God said, no. And if you do it, I'm not going to do it. But Adam allowed his wife to be tricked. In fact, Adam had his wife sit there and had a conversation, a whole conversation with another man, entity, or whatever it was, snake, or whatever you want, whatever, whatever scholar wants to call it, all I know is Adam allowed his wife to have that conversation without him being there to step up. Like, what are we doing here? Why, why are you talking to my wife, trying to get my wife to do something that God says not to do? Adam showed that he was 
excuse my language, ballless from the beginning. If only Adam stood up for his family, stood up for his wife, and understood that that God said no. Why do we do stuff when God say no? God say no, don't get in that relationship. No, don't date these kind of people because these kind of people are selfless. They don't know how to love. They are false prophets. They will lie to you. They steal. They will kill. They're malice. Why do we date those same very people? God tell us in the book, this book here, not to date. Because that person that we, our worst enemy is inside us. Our worst enemy is us. That worst enemy is us. And so I was reading James and James 13. Uh, James, um, yeah, James, James 13. It says, when tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, but each, each one is tempted when, when by their, his own desires, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after his desires is conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin is a full grown gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters, every good good and perfect gift is from above and coming down from the father of the heavenly of the heavenly lights who does not change like a shifting shadow he chose to give us birth through the word of the truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of all creations why why do we allow ourselves to, we, we we know if we watch that porn it's going to make us want to masturbate. We know if we masturbate, we know we commit a sin. We know if we we know if we go out on a date with that woman, we're going to want to have sex with her. We're going to we're going to lust. We know if we look too long, we're going to lust. And God and Jesus Christ said that if you look upon a woman, it's lust. Why do we continuously, on purposely sin? I know a lot of people like to say, you know, we all sin and we fall short. That's, that's everybody's go-to verse. But when you blatantly or purposely sin, you can't use that. You can't use that because guess what? You know that the, there's a war out there. We don't battle against the flesh and blood, but the unseen enemy, the principalities of, of, of the underworld, the prince of this air, the God of this world, that's who we battle. So you knowing this, why Put yourself in the lion's den. Why put yourself in a situation where you are going to sin? We have to. We have to learn to le know ourselves. We have to know that if we're trying to stop drinking, if we're trying to stop smoking, that we can't be around those people that smoke. We can't be around that. We can't say that I'm gonna stop a little bit. Or if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating too much and you go out to the restaurant and you keep overlapsing, we have to stop putting ourselves in a situation where we're going to fall short. Yes, we all fall short. But God examines the heart. He examines those he know for a fact that is trying. Not walking towards sin, but walking away from sin. Have a good day.